Henry Mears got great chops. A New Yorker, born and bred, an Upper East Side boy, worked for two of the best chefs in the city. With all this French background, he decided he wanted to do something quintessentially American, an old-fashioned chop house reinvented. Turn of the century food, but modernized. He's done it, he's pulled it off, the food's great. Restaurant City Hall is located in a gorgeous cast iron building, downtown Tribeca on Duane Street. It goes back to the days when Duane Street was a shoe manufacturing district. Originally, this was a factory for shoes. Henry Mears done a fabulous job converting it into a two-story restaurant with a great dining room on the first floor, with a wonderful bar space and private dining downstairs. One of the best renovations I've seen in the city. All right, we're here at City Hall Restaurant. Henry Mears, thanks for it. Pleasure. Having us nice in. to see Henry you Henry and I went, went, didn't go to cooking school together, but I remember you from my days there. So you graduated in 81, 82. Mm -hmm. You were born and bred New Yorker, Upper East Side. Tell mm -hmm. me your background. Why did you get into cooking? You look like I, a bright I, guy. Why did you do that? Yeah, exactly. I'm going to kind, kind of blame my mother. Mm. Um, um, I loved her. She's wonderful, phenomenal mother, but terrible cook. <laughs> this is terrible. a familiar story. We hear this from a lot of guests. Except <laughs> one thing that she was able to make was scrambled eggs. And when somebody asked me what my last meal would be, it would be soft scrambled eggs and rye toast. But anyway, living in New York City, we were brought up on pizza and hot dogs and, and Dumas pastry, which was sort of in our, in our neighborhood. Yeah and Shell and Weber and all that stuff that was just sort of right there in New York. But since food is so accessible in New York, we, um, I loved it. Um, and being my mother, really, not that she didn't like to cook, had no idea how to boil water, would be, um, we'd be eating out a lot. So that was kind of what got me into thinking about the restaurant industry and uh, restaurants. You were one of those graduates of the postgraduate school at that time for a lot of leading New York chefs, which was Le Code Basque. Yeah. You were with Jack Reshu for what, four years? Yeah, four or five, somewhere around there. And, and that was a phenomenal experience. Yeah. And then, really, what was finishing school for a lot of people then at the best restaurant of that time was yeah. Lutess. Yeah. And you were Andre Saltner's guy for yeah, another worked, worked almost my a way up to sous chef for, for about 10 years. I really felt that the French cooking was the foundation of, of cooking and it really gave me my legs, my cooking legs, to be able to go on and to be able to open up my own restaurant. Which is something that as a, as a cook you, you dream about, whether it's a slow Monday or in the midst of the frenzy on a Saturday night, that saying, you know, one day I want to not just be the expediter, yeah. but yeah. be responsible. Little did I know what it meant. <laughs> Watch out for what you wish for. <laughs> That's right. But I want to be you sort of picked and chose among the classic ca canonical, is that the word? Sort of this American cuisine, a prime rib, uh, mm -hmm. a ribeye with Maytag blue cheese. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it, this reminds me of almost my old uh, Fanny Farmer cookbook mm -hmm. with a chef handling it. Mm -hmm. The food at City Hall is not fancy in the thought of the classic French. Um, it hasn't, doesn't have a tremendous amount of different ingredients mm -hmm. on one plate. What it does have, it's styled as a New York fish and chop house. Um, phenomenally, perfectly dry aged steaks, the freshest of fish, selection of half a dozen, dozen of vegetables and sides, um, and our oyster raw bar, which I think is something that we're very proud of. Again, having been here, I've walked past this. I didn't notice this until today. And those little kettles that you have, the only other place I know that has those, the Grand Central Oyster Bar. Exactly. And that, it's a little individual steam jacket. Kettle. They're called pan roasts, and uh, pan it's a pan so roast, which, is a, which is a New York chowder. Yeah, that was, it was very difficult to find, but we were able to find them. It allows us to, to make the chowders a la yeah. And it also gives a little bit of show in cinema to the customers being able to walk by and yeah. to be able to smell, smell the um, bisque-style um, pan roast um, cooking. But ideally, it, it's, you know, we sort of brought the kitchen into the dining room. Um, and it's, it's one thing to have the oyster bar here and people can sit at the oyster bar and, and just pick and make a selection. But we also did a coffee bar, which isn't really a coffee bar, it's more of a coffee station. Um, and I always felt the coffee was neglected. So we designated a whole area where a barista just sits there and makes coffee. Mm. So I, I, it works well also because of the consistency yeah, the factor. the quality, one person who knows it, tunes the machine, who knows exactly what's exactly. in there. 
We're okay. down here at Restaurant City Hall with a man who should know a thing or two about City Hall. Mayor Koch, it's a pleasure. Well, this is one of the great uh, restaurants. It's not only the food, and the food is delicious, and I just had a ribeye. <laughs> Um, but it's the ambience. I mean, uh, this particular room, and then there are rooms downstairs. Uh, Henry, who owns it, is also the uh, uh, chef, yeah. has done a wonderful, wonderful job. And City Hall is my destination um, <laughs> three, four times a month. <laughs> you can't beat it. And you're a New York eater, so I mean, you've eaten all over town. It's, I know every restaurant. New York food. I know every restaurant. I know every place to eat. And we got a lot of good restaurants. Yeah, it's a restaurant capital of the planet, yeah, I think. It's wonderful. Well, thanks for your time and thanks for Thank watching you. the show. Thank you. Too kind of you. Thank you. <laughs> These are the strip loin cuts out of the prime dry aged meat. And you can just see, again, this is just absolutely perfect marble. I mean, you can see the aging around the perimeter. You can see the aging here underneath that fat cap, that slightly discolored look on the inside here, too. And then look how evenly that fat's distributed. That's how this grades prime. Just those little flecks of fat all the way through the meat. That's, that's a beautiful piece of steak. Nice and thick. You know, you get a medium rare, it's gorgeous. And you can smell the age on that. The guests love it. And coupling that with a great selection of sides, caramelized cauliflower, grilled asparagus, whether it's a phenomenal deluxe baked potato. And you're just offering this, you're offering a, a cuisine that people know about. That people don't have to worry about, well, am I eating it properly? What is it? Yeah, which fork do I use? And, and that they can use it and then they can eat it often. Yeah. I mean, we have clients that come in here five, six times a week. They order the same thing, but it's also, they order something that is familiar. The wedge salad. Wedge salad. That's, what, that's something my mother was able to make, was cut the, cut the iceberg lettuce in half, wedge it, and give me Marie's a blue cheese dressing. So that's what we offer. We offer a wedge salad. Ode to my mom. I hope she's listening. Um, Iceberg what kind lettuce. Of, yeah, what kind of dressing? Iceberg lettuce. We make a Mos uh, Moscow mayonnaise, which is sort of our twist on Russian dressing, and Maytag blue cheese on top. And you know, after after 15 years being in the classic French kitchens, here I am serving iceberg lettuce. <laughs> I go, I've arrived. <laughs> yeah. um, even on top of that, our our hamburger here, I think I will put up against any hamburger in the city. Other than Danielle's foie gras burger. Well, that's course. not a hamburger. That's no. Not, no. You're braising but, short ribs and studying it with foie right. gras. You've left the realm of hamburgers. <laughs> right. we're, we're, we're talking 80 20 ground meat in my book. <laughs> yeah. But that's, but our burger, we bake our own buns. We have this great blend of grind that I, that I use mm -hmm. for it. Um, that it's, it's a phenomenal burger. So, again, getting back to the basics. I mean, it's a great old space. This is what, mid 1800s cast iron building? 1863 on Duane Street in Tribeca. Huge, huge, beautiful columns. Um, went to the Museum of the City of New York and the New York City Archives and talked to them. Spent about three months going through their inventory of, of, of pictures. So wonderfully helpful. Um, they allowed us to be able to use their pictures. So, enabled to make this 20, 20 foot high space to come down a little bit to get cozy and comfortable and intimate and to represent New York. Again, so it's just, it, I'm a great ambassador for New York City. I, I think it's a phenomenal part of the world. Um, hence, City Hall um, really represents the best of New York for people who not only live in New York, but also people that are visiting New York. Come to, come to New York and come to City Hall and have a great, have a great dry aged steak, have a great pan roast, a dozen oysters. We're here with the, uh, this is kind of your basic seafood platter. It's an appetizer. You got your shrimp up top with the uh, langoustine on the side. Kind of like your normal shrimp cocktail. We'll have some cocktail sauces sides. Down here we've got scallops in the shell. These gorgeous, look at the size of these mussels. Lobster, we'll spin this around if we can. We've got a half a lobster there. We've got the tail and the claws will crack. Some beautiful oysters. Let's see what these taste like. Superb. Nothing like a fresh shucked oyster. All right, you know, we are looking at those beautiful strip steaks before. It's a little bit of Bernays sauce that I love with steaks, especially a good Bernays. And that is a beautiful here. Look at that. Just, just at medium rare, just a tad there, just a tad past, and let's eat. A little Bernays.
doesn't get any better. That's great. You were five blocks north of the World Trade Center. You were on a run, on a tear business-wise, pre-9-11. I mean, you had a reputation, you brought, your cub room business was, you had this monstrous business going, bang, 9-11 comes, what was that like? Um, well, as far as emotionally, it was a, we're still recovering from it. Um, financially, thank God we've been blessed with a phenomenal staff as well as a great support group of, of clients that keep on coming back. Um, but I, I think that, as you said, it was, we were going into our third year, um, we were just on fire. Um, we stopped. We took it. We took it. Literally, eight we, or nine days, you were done. There was no electricity. You were done. You were closed. We, we were closed for um, eight days. Um, we were without power for five days, and I felt it was important not just to the staff, but also to my peace of mind to get open as quick as possible. Um, so we opened up eight days after, literally, did 15 covers the first night. Um, and it really wasn't about doing the covers. It was just about showing the yeah. world that our lights, lights were on. on. Yeah. And, um, and our staff needed it, I needed it, my wife needed it, we needed to be able to be up and running. Um, we literally opened a new restaurant after September 11th. All right, Henry Meir has that great restaurant downtown on Duane Street. Beautiful building, beautiful restaurant. Love the story, love the food. All summer long, spring, summer, fall, he's got a relative, family member, I believe, that has 100 acres out in Bridgehampton, Long Island. Yeah. Farm, 10 acres of that, they just use as an organic farm for them. And Henry gets all kinds of vegetables down for the restaurant just for him, just from that farm. So we're shopping like I always try to do for these shows. And I've got some nice... I'd use Yukon Gold. I'm going to make hash browns, but I'm not going to use Yukon Golds because I don't have any. I'm going to use these guys, a red potato, boil them. We're going to shred them. And if you didn't want to make hash browns, you could buy these little, littler ones and just boil these up. These are beautiful. Just clean them up, scrub them, salted, salted water, boil them till they're tender till you can put a knife in them. And then you just mash these. I mean, there's something about, again, talk about season, seasonality. Fresh potatoes just picked in season. You mash this with a fork, a little bit of sea salt, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, some chopped parsley. It's heaven. I mean, great food doesn't need embellishments. So this is another great option. This is just another variety of a white potato. But same thing, you can see the dirt on these things. I mean, these are just, just out of the ground, still warm. I mean, look at that. That's a fresh potato. And there really is a difference in flavor. These things are like jewels. I don't even boil these. Hot roasting pan, like a Griswold cast iron pan, just roll them around in oil, roll them around in oil till they're tender, a little butter, a little salt and pepper. This is heaven. All right, I'm getting hungry. Let's cook. Hey, City Hall, that's so cool. Henry, I mean, I remember this guy was at the CIA when I was there, which is like eons ago. Who was president then, anyway? Was it, was it Reagan? I don't know. It was a long, first term, long, long time ago. Some of you was babies. Um, and even then, he was a serious guy because he wasn't a kid. He was like, you know, 24, 25, had been around the block, going to college. And I just remember him. I remember certain guys then. Portali was there when I was there. He was there. Christian Zwaldi was in my class. Um, he's at Monterey Shea now. But I remember Henry back then, a serious New York guy, bright, you know, a, a cut of a different cloth than most of us were. Lutes, coat boss for years with Jacques Rochoux, then Lutes for a long time. Only two places he worked under these great French mentor chefs. And these guys are really the quintessential old school chef restaurant owners. And I mean that because they were there all the time. I mean, these guys today, God bless them, that are successful. You know, they've got seven restaurants, they work four days a week, they golf, they've got three handicaps, they play tennis, you know, they got personal massage artists, they're never around. I mean, whatever happened? When I was a kid growing up, chefs like lived in the kitchen. I mean, literally, Andre Saltner lives upstairs, lived above Lutet, still lives in that building, I think. But, you know, restaurants downstairs, beds upstairs, that's what you do. Rush used to sleep on the banquettes between service. I mean, so Henry came out of that mold, and then he decided, so what do you do with all this French stuff? And he opened up this quintessential old-style New York restaurant. And again, I likened him this season to Ben Benson in that they have this very iconic American menu that, you know, you can read it, foodies can go there and say, wow, this is really good food, and it is. And you could also bring people from anywhere, and they're going to be able to read the menu and recognize it. Oh, yeah, it's a ribeye steak. It's a, it's a piece of salmon cooked this way. Uh, Bernays sauce, I kind of know what that is. Great ingredients, 
old New York kind of chop house cuisine modernized. And I've been waiting for somebody to do this because there's nothing wrong with any of that food. It's just that as it became passe, no one paid attention. But, you know, we, again, with the Ben thing, we talked about the great salads, the great wedge salads, the great, what's he have down there? What's he call it? The, he calls Russian dressing something else, Moscow mayonnaise or something. It's Russian dressing, but it's great. And he uses Maytag for his blue cheese, and, you know, his steak is dry aged. That, I got, his steaks are some of the best steaks I've had anywhere in New York, and it's not really a steakhouse. Add to that the oyster bar, the little pots that he does, those little stew things, whatever those things are called. It's a classic, and the building's beautiful. If you haven't been, go. So what do I cook? I don't know. So uh, I'm going to cook. I'm going to cook something. I'm thinking classic American again and yet modernized. So I got uh, the lamb chops where I have aren't good. And this is one of the beauties of modern days. I ordered this from Neiman Ranch. I'll cut these bad boys open for you. And we'll just dissolve kind of fast forward-ish with my knife. You can order this stuff. Neiman Ranch is one of the great producers of organic, you know, animals that were raised correctly. These animals were actually really happy until they were slaughtered. And these are beautiful lamb chops. We're going to grill these. We're going to serve them with this is organic Swiss chard. And how do you know it's organic? We'll take a look. See that? Anytime you see that much of the tops ripped off of something, this is organic. He's a friend of mine, grows organic greens. I'm just going to trim them up, keep the stems, use the leaves. Everything's going to be beautiful with this. Delicious. I boiled these already. I have these potatoes. I put them in cold water, a lot of salt, bring it up to a boil. Uh, simmer, simmer, excuse me, bring it up to a simmer, then really slowly I cook them, just a little simmer, salted, salted water, until I can put a peri knife in and out, then I cool them overnight, grate them, I'm going to make a hash brown. Henry, you saw in his, downstairs at, at, at City Hall, he was getting those, um, what do you call them, the blue, the uh, Yukon gold potatoes, that he cooked very, very slowly, they peel them, and then they were putting through a, a French fry machine. So they're getting that long extruded pieces, and that's how they made their hash browns. Great hash brown. We're going to do the same thing. Lamb chops, hash browns, Swiss chard. You know, hey, stay in City Hall, but it's my kitchen, you know, and it's easy to do. All right, stay tuned. I'm going to wash these, rinse them, then we'll get to the Swiss chard. And I'm just peeling it. And I do this. See what I do when I work? I try and, rather than peeling it onto the cutting board, I try and get my trim into a container so I'm not making a mess. Someone long ago taught me this. It's just a little cleaner way to cook. And when these are peeled, we're going to run them through this grater just to get them shredded. All right. You can see I'm just shredding down there, simple as could be. Everything's there. We're going to love that. And I'll meet you at the stove. We'll season this, put it in the pan, and we have the hash brown working. I would use, if I had it, I'd use some bacon fat here. I usually keep bacon fat around because we eat bacon eh, on the weekends for breakfast around here. It's kind of a routine. Bacon fat would be perfect in there. This is just a great old cast iron skillet. Perfect for this. You could use Teflon if you wanted to. And then we're going to get this more and just pack it in. Make like a potato cake. A little seasoning here. Going to need some salt. Just a little. And then pack it nice and tight. I'm going to put a little more oil in around the edges here. I'll show you in a second. And this is pretty much your classical hash brown. Just a little oil around that edge so they're not sticking because we just packed that there. And you can see it cooking. And we're just going to leave it alone. That's the key. Leave it alone now for, I'm going to say, five to seven minutes easy. While we're waiting, we're just going to put my lamb chops right on the fire. You know, I was a kid, French restaurants didn't have grills. You just had open burners, and you had one of these. They make these even half sizes, even smaller, so they just fit on one burner, and I love this thing. Old as the hills. I've had it since the beginning of time. Seasoned properly, and it's just great for indoor grilling if you don't feel like going out and sparking up the propane or lighting up the barbecue. All right. I can't resist putting a little garlic in with the Swiss chard. You can put onions in, you can put nothing in. Swiss chard has so much flavor, but I love garlic. Good. See, you get nice grill marks. I mean, the reason that didn't get a grill mark is because of the bone. This bone kept that from touching, but that would happen on any grill. Just, that's like 
this. Oh yeah. That's what a hash brown's supposed to look like, but it's only half cooked, remember? So let me get a spatula and go back in. Beautiful. Give it a little squirt of oil around the edge just to make sure. Beautiful. The last turn. Gorgeous. Beautiful. All right, these are going to be done. Figure out which side we want to serve up. Probably this side. We're just going to hold these in the oven warm, and I'll put the potatoes next to them in about a minute. That potato's not quite crispy yet. So just putting this in about a 200 degree oven to hold it. All right, we're going to serve it on the other side up. So when I go to serve this, I'm going to turn it once. Into the oven, Swiss chard is next. A little olive oil. That's a beautiful color, isn't that? A little garlic. Hey. Okay. All right, it's just taking a little color. And in goes the Swiss chard. I don't want to overload the pan. It's going to shrink like crazy. You'll see how this happens. Looks like there's a lot in there and suddenly there's nothing. By the time we're done, this will be a few tablespoons. A little salt. Now you can see already, they're just, it's just, these greens just wilt. I mean, Swiss chard is no different than escarole. You know, it's almost like a hearty version of spinach, if you will. And I don't mind a little crunch in these stems because it's just so darn tasty. And you can see the red. See that red just coming off the chard? Beautiful stuff, man. I love chard. Great fall, winter vegetable. Not much longer. Maybe another minute in the pan just so we get these little bigger center ribs cooked. piece of this potato here. Got a nice section here. Nice and crunchy. Got a lamb chop here. Hold that other one. And I've got my beautiful Swiss chard. You see again all that red in the pan. This is just nice stuff. Simple as can be. And then what I would do, because I'm me, is just give myself a little squirt, just a little squirt of olive oil. Just to drizzle on that, just like that. So you got your loin chop, your crispy hash browns. We'll put a fork in that and see how crispy I mean, I love these, making these things at home. Yeah, you can hear that, huh? That's just, it's what a hash brown's supposed to be. Crispy on the outside, like butter on the inside. For breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Can't beat it. Great lamb chops, simple, Swiss chard. Now, we saw none of this except the hash browns at City Hall. But once again, I took liberties, you know. You saw his show. You saw that stuff. What, am I going to do the exact same stuff? No. That's why you go there. Great steaks. He's got great seafood. Great salads. Super oysters. The seafood platter we ate was tremendous. Great American wine list. Great service in a beautiful room. Hey. Oh, and Ed Koch was there. How about that stuff, man? I got to meet the mayor. Yeah, there I am at City Hall, and who do I meet? The man himself, Ed Koch, Mr. Foodie. I don't know, is Bloomberg a foodie? Maybe you even know about this guy? I don't know, he's kind of mysterious, but Koch, he was cool. That was base. Anyway, Henry Mir, you're cool. Great restaurant. Go downtown, frequent these places. He's a real part of New York. Was there through 9-11. Lived through it, survived. Keep the restaurant going and going strong as it is. So take care. Until next time, cook at home. Have fun. See ya.